Bonjour, Kinemage and Nene Ireland Edition and welcome to today's social studies presentation. Today's lesson, social studies, chapter two, section four, Ghana. We begin here on the continent of North America, where we have studied the Pacific Northwest, the Southwest, the Eastern Woodlands, and the Great Plains. But not all of our history involves Turtle Island. A large percentage of our current Americans trace their lineage to another continent. That continent is Africa. especially the regions of West Africa. And in today's lesson, we're going to focus on the first of three major Western African empires. And that empire is Ghana. You'll see that there is a triangle formed between Western Europe, Western Africa, and the Americas. And that's important to remember as we are now moving through the West African kingdoms, and we'll be connecting into the Colombian exchange in a few weeks. So looking at West Africa, you can see there's a very fine line between the areas here that are forested and the Saharan desert. This desert stretches from the West Coast, which is the Atlantic Ocean if you're here, all the way across and into Asia, this whole strip of land. Just to give a little bit of relation, you can see this is Spain. This is the Mediterranean Sea. This is Saudi Arabia and the Arabian Peninsula. You can see some of the modern countries here. This is not to suggest they are in the exact same place as previous nations with that name. You can see Ghana's right here. Mali is another one we'll be talking about. And we'll also be talking about one called Songhai that isn't on the map anymore. Um, so you can kind of see that we're in that area transitioning to desert. If you think to yourself about how desert travel was conducted, they didn't have cars in the eighth century or the 12th century, or in really in even the 18th century. We had to get across there somehow. And if you look very closely, it's desert. So unlike the Anishinaabe, they couldn't just to build a canoe and travel down the river. Although maybe in some portions along the Egyptian Nile River, they might have been able to. But by and large, you're not traveling east to west across the desert. So they needed an animal to do such. And that animal was the camel. So there is going to be trade set up between Arab traders from over here in the Islamic world and the West African empires over here. Um, there is a section that I'll be reading here momentarily, but I wanted to set the, the globe for you as we continue our exploration of the United States history by focusing on the influence of West Africa. So this is the first of three, as I mentioned. It is chapter two, section four. The questions to guide inquiry. How did the location of the three empires impact the cultural and economic development of each? And what led Ghana's growth and demise as an empire? There are vocabulary words, tropical rainforest. That is areas that receive a lot of rain and they're very warm. In places like the Congo, the Amazon, in this case, Congo is a big one in that region, but there are others. Savannah, those are similar to what we might see in the Great Plains. Not exactly, but the similar idea. Not a lot of trees, but a lot of open space and grass. Drought, that term is when there's a long-term period without enough rain. Not a dry couple of weeks but it might be dry months, years, decades. Islam is um, one of the three major Western religions. 
and you'll cover that in a future social studies lesson, but it is based roughly out of what is now the Middle East. Muslim or Muslim, depending on how you pronounce it, is an adherent or someone who follows the Islamic faith. An empire is a section of land controlled by a leader, um, usually a king, queen, um, emperor. Oral history is no different than what our tradition is, where we tell stories. And for centuries, they weren't written down, they were shared from elder to child. We'll see, a, we're gonna learn a little bit about a griot and interdependence as well as we go through here. So I want you to look for those two words as the two words I want you to, to figure out based on context. Beginning at the top, the continent of Africa is far away from North America where the American Indians lived. How the lives of the North American Indians, Africans and Europeans came together in the 17th century is a very important part of United States history. It is important to learn about each of these groups and how they lived before interacting with one another in the Western Hemisphere. If you and a friend could trade with each other for something you both wanted and the other person had, what would you trade? Is the value of those products similar? Would you ever consider trading gold for salt? Why or why not? Well, in ancient African empires, which were a variety of territories and groups controlled by one government, that is exactly what they did. So key, key detail, we trade gold for salt. Yes, the kind of salt that preserves and flavors food, giving away gold for it. And you should be asking yourself, well, why, Mr. I, would you trade gold for salt? I can go to the dollar store and get salt. But remember, these are centuries ago when there was not a refrigerator in your kitchen or an ice box or a chest freezer. You needed to do something to preserve the food. Continuing on in 33. Africa is a huge continent, the second largest of the seven. Today, Africa contains over 50 countries and hundreds of cultures. There are also more than 2,000 languages that are spoken there now. Africa has a deep history with evidence of the earliest humans being found there. There are five regions in Africa, but Western Africa is going to be our focus. Western Africa is home to three major, three different major vegetation regions. These regions all played an important role in the development of early African empires. The Northern vegetation region of, North, of West Africa is the Sahara Desert, the world's largest hot desert. The Southern part of West Africa is quite the opposite. There lies the tropical rainforest, which is a forest in a tropical area that has lots of rain and is very hot from being near the equator. In between the Sahara Desert and the tropical rainforest is the savanna. You see it here in yellow. A region with tall grasses and a few trees. Savannas have a short rainy season and therefore often experience droughts. Droughts occur, occur when there is a lack of rain or dry weather that is harmful to crops. These diverse vegetation regions led to the rise of three empires. So now let's look at our maps that are here. Yes, you will be expected to identify in a map of Africa where North Africa is, West Africa, Middle Africa, Eastern Africa, and Southern Africa. Just like we did with putting the tribal regions on our map of Turtle Island. So this is more political. This is our vegetational one. You can see the brown is desert. You can see the Sahara is this one right here. The yellow is the savanna, that's the grasslands. Literally the homes to lions, and not just our Detroit lions. And then you see the tropical rainforest, one of the big ones being the Congo. Top of the next page, the rise and fall of an empire. And you can see we start out with a map. This is the region where Ghana was in that time. If you Think about it, it's moved. Ghana is now on the Gulf of Guinea. 
it was over here at this point. All three of these societies and cultures that we're going to be learning about this week um, are in the same general area. And you can see a city that you might have heard of, Timbuktu. When I was a child, you know, about the same time that Ghana was around, Timbuktu was a country refer or a place referenced by like my grandparents as someplace so far away. And when I was a kid, I almost thought that this must be a, a made up or magical place. In a way it was magical. It was the home of libraries and culture that would be amazing to see today. So now you see where Africa, in Africa, here's Ghana, so West Africa. Um, you can see this goes north towards Morocco, which is a country on the coast, over here towards Egypt, and then south. And you can see the mention of the place Songhai, which we'll be covering as well. Um, another important city, Gao. All right, the rise and fall of an empire. Remember one of the initial questions about trade? Would you think that anyone would ever trade gold, salt for gold? People of West Africa would, and they did. Salt was an abundant resource in the Sahara Desert. It was used to preserve food, which was necessary for those who lived in the rainforest of South, Southern West Africa. Gold, on the other hand, was an abundant resource in the tropical rainforest. It was a valuable resource because it was desired in Europe and Asia. There was so much gold in the rainforest that it wasn't very valuable to those who lived there. Since these people needed salt to preserve their food and had a lot of gold, they could trade what they had for what they needed. This trade of goods built an interdependence, there's one of those two words, the quality of mutually relying on others among groups in West Africa. So literally inter means between, dependence means you require them. So they needed, they required the others for what to get what they needed. How do you imagine that people were able to trade resources? They had to cross vast expanses of land to be able to trade with each other. Crossing the Sahara Desert presented challenges. Because of the extreme heat and lack of water, that kind of travel became easier using camels. Regular trade routes grew, and at the center of those trade routes was Ghana. Look at the map of Africa to see where the empire of Ghana developed. Ghana rose in power around the year 700 CE, which we also call AD. CE is short for Common Era, which was a replacement for Anno Domini, and was located between the desert and rainforest in the Savanna region. It was directly between two sought after resources, gold and salt. The early kingdom, not to be confused with the current country, Ghana, it started long before the year 700. The people there traded goods and farmed in their small villages made up of family compounds. Those families would join together to listen to griots, storytellers responsible for remembering and telling about an area's history. So there's our second vocab word. A griot is like a storyteller. Well, it is a storyteller. Because there was no written language, oral history was important. Oral, oral history is information that is passed down by speaking and is not always written down, Mo not unlike some of our cultural stories. Next page 36. Within these villages, Africans mined iron ore and used it to build tools for farming and weapons for fighting. These weapons, along with its location, gave Ghana an upper edge in defeating smaller, weaker groups in its rise to power. Because they were located near two valuable resources, they soon began to control the trade. They taxed traders that came into Ghana with goods to trade. In exchange, Ghana offered traders a safe environment. Ghana soon became wealthy from the taxes and used the money to strengthen their army. As traders from different areas came to Ghana, they brought with them new ideas and beliefs. Most traders that came across the Sahara Desert were Muslims or Muslims. Both pronunciations are frequently used. A Muslim is someone who follows and believes the Islamic religion. Islam is a major religion of the world with the belief that there is only one God and that Muhammad was his most important prophet. Ghana started to use and incorporate some of these religious beliefs and ideas into their culture. Around the year 1100, Ghana started to decline. It was hurt by a severe drought, coupled with an attack from an outside force. A new leader came to power in Ghana 
but was easily defeated by the ruler of Mali, who was called Sundiata. Mali soon took over the empire that was once Ghana. And you can see there are some attached links. Uh, I checked out one of these right here. Um, I did a Google search for the Kingdom of Ghana, and you can see some of the very impressive. Let's see if I can open this one up here. No, that didn't make it a whole lot bigger. Some of the cool artwork, very gold, because they had a lot of gold. Um, so Ghana is a really interesting topic for me. Um, I enjoy learning about it, and I enjoy teaching about it. I'm going to stop my share as I wrap this lesson up. So keep in mind, again, that we value gold as being so worth it and saw this something that's cheaper. But not all cultures are going to find the same experiences. That's our current 20th, 21st century Americanized culture. For the people of West Africa, salt was much important, more important because, well, food is useful. As we go through this lesson in this section, it's great to have an understanding of some of these West African cultures. And you'll cover some more as you move into middle school. Um, you tend to hear about uh, Nubia and Egypt, but there are others. And if this is an area that piques your interest, feel free to let me know and I can look for content about other cultures in Africa, even if it's not something that's graded. At this point, you should return back to your Google Classroom. There is an assignment waiting for you, a short couple questions about our reading. If you have any questions, please message me at mirland at sidechipschool.net, visit our live stream or office hours at 2 p.m. most days. Without further ado, I hope you all have a minogijigad. Bama pee.